So, what we saw now was sparse representations or one hot representations sparse because only one bit is on from there we will move on to something known as uh, distributed representations of words and we have already seen that sparse is ok in theory because it gives a very simple recipe of converting words to vectors, but it does not serve much purpose. So, let us see what distributed representations of words are. So, this around 1957 uh, J R Firth made this very profound statement that you shall know a word by the company it keeps ok and this is of course, a play on some other similar quote, but uh, what does this actually mean? So, it means that you want to know what does the word bank convey or what is the essence of the word bank right. What this quote says is that if you want to know about bank you should say you should see the company that it keeps that means what are the other words which appear typically in its neighborhood and of course, when you have a large amount of corpus given say the entire Wikipedia of course, at that time Wikipedia did not exist, but any large corpus and that's this led to something known as distributional similarity based representations ok. So, to understand this we will first have to understand the idea of a co occurrence matrix. So, the basic idea is to use the accompanying words which in this example happen to be financial financial deposits credit etcetera to represent bank and to do that we will construct something known as a co occurrence matrix which looks like this right. So, a co occurrence matrix is a terms cross terms matrix that means every row in the matrix corresponds to a term or a word and every column in the matrix also corresponds to a term or a word. Can you guess what how many rows would there be size of the vocabulary how many columns would there be size of the vocabulary right ok. So, here is how we construct a, a co occurrence matrix. So, we take a word ok we are interest, interested in constructing the row for that word the number of columns is the same as the size of the vocabulary ok. Now, for every column we will make an entry which tells us whether or how many times this this word appeared in the context of the target word right. For example, if I look at machine I am looking at the row for machine I am trying to construct the entries in that row. I know that the number of columns is equal to the all the unique words in my vocabulary ok. So, I look at the first word which is human and in that cell I enter the value which is the number of times human appeared in a window of k words around machine is that fine is that straightforward right and that is how I will construct this co occurrence matrix when I have taken the window size as 2. That means, in any given cell my entry would be the number of times human appeared within a 2 word window of machine right. Is the IGH cell clear the definition of the IGH cell clear? So, this tells me that user actually appeared 2 times around the word system in a window of 2 words around it is that clear everyone gets this how I construct the co occurrence matrix ok. Now, you could use the same so, this is known as words and this is known as context that means, the rows we refer to them as words and the columns we refer to them as context. Now, as you said that the number of rows and the number of columns can be same that we can consider the same words in the context as well as the same word as the target words right. But you could also do something different you could say that I do not want to consider all words as context words because for example, the word for appearing with any other word does not really give me much information because it is just a stop word right or the word the or an or a these are known as stop words in the language these do not really give me much information. So, if you go back to the bank example financial credit deposit are the words which I really care about and these other the financial bank or with deposits and also these words do not really matter a lot ok. Do you get the intuition ok. So, you could choose to have fewer columns which are only the important words that you consider and you ignore the stop words. In this discussion I will alternately switch between considering the columns as the same as the rows and sometimes the restricting the columns to fewer number of uh, entries ok. So, now each row gives us the vectorial representation of the word. So, I have seen how we have moved from sparse representations to distributed representations ok. So, now take a guess now would this vector be sparse. So, we saw the extreme sparse right which was one hot. Now, the vectors which you get here are they going to be dense or still sparse sparse right because every word does not appear with every other word right you still have these v dimensional vector 
and there are some words which will appear with very few words, right. So, you expect to have non-zero entries in very few columns, right. So, these representations are also sparse, okay. So, there are some problems, some of which are fixable. So, we look at the fixable problems first. The first thing is the stop words are very frequent. So, these counts would be very large. So, if you take the entire Wikipedia corpus and you take the word machine or system, then the words the and for and so on would have appeared like more than 1000 times in the context of the word machine, right. And as compared to the other words like system or user, they would have appeared much fewer times. So, this kind of uh, skews your counts, right, it is like heavily biased in the favor of stop words. So, how do you deal with this? So, there are two ways, one is ignore frequent words. So, that is the solution which I suggested earlier that your number of columns would be less than the number of words, is that fine? So, you do not actually consider frequent words at all. The other is use a threshold T. So, that means in these columns like for and with and so on, whatever be the entry, if that crosses a certain threshold, then I will just replace it by that threshold, is that clear? So, I am just saying that this means that the word has appeared more than 100 times and I am not interested in keeping the actual count which was more than 100, okay. I am just saying that more than 100 is enough for me, right, because I know that all the other entries are going to be much less than this, okay. So, just like replacing it by a very large number instead of actually counting that number. Uh, the other solution is instead of count, you can use something known as PMI. Uh, so, this is how you compute PMI, even if you do not know it does not make a lot of difference because you know that it will always be there on the slide that is why you guys do not read anything. So, PMI is computed like this. So, intuitively tell me what does PMI capture? Look I would say focus on this formula rather than the above one. When would it be high? The easier question to answer is when would it be low? Remember you are dealing with a fraction. So, if independently the two words appear a lot of times, but together they appear very rarely then the PMI is going to be low, is that clear? Now, if both the words appear 100 times and together also they appear 100 times, that is the best case scenario. That means, these are very tightly tied words, right. They always tend to appear together, right. So, the PMI would be high for words which are very frequently co-occurring, okay. Now, so this is what would happen if you replace the counts, the co-occurrence counts by the corresponding PMI, okay. Now, if the count of two words is 0, we have a problem because then the PMI tends to be minus infinity, right. So, how do you deal with this situation? Yeah, epsilon or some, we will use some hack, right, as usual. So, instead of uh, PMI, use something known as PMI 0, which works like this. If the count is greater than 0, then you use PMI. If the count is not equal to 0, then you just put the entry 0 in the cell, okay. Make sense? There is also something known as positive PMI, which is slightly more extreme. It says that use the PMI only if the PMI is greater than 0, otherwise use 0. Can anyone tell me the rationale for doing this? You see the subtle difference between the three things, right. One is of course, doomed because you cannot handle 0 counts. The other one is saying that if the count is 0, then I will just substitute 0. The last one is saying that if the PMI is negative, right, then I will replace it by 0. That means, in the last case, all the cells in your coke or in your PMI matrix would be positive, right, non-negative non rather. So, can you tell me the rough intuition for using this? And there is only a rough intuition, but can you tell me? So, the very rough intuition for this is that, what does it even mean to say that two words are negatively correlated, right? I mean either they occur together, right, which means there is some relation between them, but a negative relation between words does not make sense, right. That is the intuition behind this. Now, of course, I could argue that what about antonyms and things like that, but that is also not the same, right, because you could have good and bad in the same sentence, right. But that is the roughly the intuition that negative values do not mean much, so just replace them by zeros, okay. There is no again a formal reasoning behind this, it is just the intuition, okay. So, we have looked at the co-occurrence matrix where we started with counts. These counts were very sparse and there are also some other problems with counts in the terms of some frequent words taking a lot of limelight and so on. So, we have fixed all those and we have done some very 
minor and simple fixes right I just very rough quickly rushed through them because they are very simple ok. But these were all fixable problems what is a non fixable severe problem with this what is the problem with the one hot representations large what about these representations still large right it is still of size v ok still very high dimensional still very sparse not as sparse as the one hot encoding but still sparse ok and it grows with the size of the vocabulary. So, now remember that pen tree bank had 50 k words google 1 t corpus had 13 million yeah. So, it keeps going with the size of the corpus. So, now how do you know how do you <laughs> fix this? I wish I had that Harry Potter thing. Anyone remembers that spell to wipe out your memory? How would you deal with it? So, you now see how it connects right. So, now again you have ended up with a situation where you have a very high dimensional matrix right and you are looking for ways to reduce the dimensions. So, it will go back and rely on things that you have learned and one of those was SVD right. So, you can use singular value decomposition. Why did I say is SVD and not PCA? because this is not necessarily a square matrix right this could be a rectangular matrix and for all practical purposes SVD is just a generalization of PCA right. Uh, 